Michelle here and welcome to our To Be Continued book club. Today I will be reading the first chapter so so of Upside Down Magic by Sarah Monowski. It's the first book in the Upside Down Magic series. It's published by Scholastic. Thank you Scholastic. So it's never easy when your magic goes wonky. Look at the cute little cat with bat wings. Well, let's find out what happens to her magic. Nori Horace was, return, was trying to turn herself into a kitten. The kitten had to be bl a black kitten, and it had to be completely kitten-shaped. It was the middle of summer. Nori was hiding in her family's garage. Kitten, 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 she thought. She was hiding in case something went wrong. She didn't want anyone to see. Still, if something went really wrong, her brother and sister would be close enough to hear her yell for help. Or meow for help? Or roar? Nori decided not to think about that. Hopefully she wouldn't need help. Kitten, kitten, kitten. She had to master kitten because tomorrow was the big test. Tomorrow, after so many years of waiting, she would finally take the entrance exam for Sage Academy. The school was very hard to get into. You wouldn't be accepted with anything less than amazing talents. Nori's friends weren't even bothering to try. They were all taking tests for easier schools. If Nori passed the big test, she would start fifth grade at Sage Academy in the fall. If she failed the test, no, she couldn't fail. She wasn't taking tests for any other school. She, not only because Sage Academy was a very important, very fancy magic school, but also because her brother Hawthorne went there and her sister Dahlia too, did too. Plus, Nori's father was kind of the headmaster Okay, not kind of. He was definitely the headmaster. Thinking about the big test made Nori queasy. Her magic was strong. There was no doubt about that, but sometimes her magic went wonky. And Sage Academy did not want wonky. A black kitten was likely to be on the big test tomorrow. It was a beginner animal. Nori had turned herself into a black kitten loads of times, actually. The problem was what happened after. But Nori would not think about that. Instead, she took a deep breath and lifted her chin. Kitten, kitten, kitten. The world went blurry and Nori's heart beat faster. Her body stretched and shrank. There was popping sounds. Yay, kitten! But wait, her mouth felt wrong. Nori clacked her teeth together. Clack, clack, clack. Whoa. These weren't normal teeth. These were long. These were sharp. These were powerful, long, sharp, and powerful enough to chomp through wood. Hmm, Nori thought, feeling odd. Why would a kitten want to chomp wood? Nori looked over her shoulder. She saw a perfect black kitten tail swishing in the air. Connected to the tail was a set of black kitten legs with padded feet and sharp claws. She looked down, expecting to see a matching set of front legs where her arms used to be, but... Her front legs weren't kitten legs. The fur was brown and slick. Also, she seemed to have a fat round tummy. And what was this nose? She couldn't see it well, but it was not, it was, had nothing kittenish about it. It was more of a snout, a beaver nose. Zamboozle, I'm half kitten and half beaver, Nori realized. Her magic had definitely gone wonky. Not again, she thought. What am I doing wrong? If I'll fail the big test if I do this tomorrow, I should change back right away and try again for perfect kitten. Yes, it's exactly what I should do. But the beaver kitten part of Nori wouldn't listen. Beaver kitten Nori didn't care about the big test. Beaver kitten Nori just wanted to chew stuff with her awesome beaver teeth. She searched the garage. Wood, where was there wood around here? Must chew, beaver kitten Nori thought, must make beaver dam. No, no, said a dim voice, uh, said the dim voice of girl Nori. Beaver kitten Nori waddled out of the garage and into the house. Then she went upstairs and into her father's office. Tree stumps would do, or branches, anything really made of wood. Nori spotted her father's bookshelf. It was very beautiful, having been lovingly built over 200 years ago by craftsmen in Europe. It was a very important, very expensive piece of furniture. It looked delicious. Oh, beaver kitten, Nori thought. Look at that, a wooden tall thing, chewy rectangle things. She nudged one of the books onto the floor and nibbled it. 
Hard on the outside like bark, tender on the inside like leaves. Hmm, choo choo choo. Beaver kitten Nori gnawed through four of her father's books. Then she bit through the legs of her father's solid oak desk. Next, she chewed off a section of her father's favorite armchair. She dragged fluff and wood into the guest bathroom and built a small beaver lodge under the sink. Then she chased her kitten tail for a couple of minutes and used a pile of ripped up pages for a litter box. It was awesome. She was awesome. She, Beaver Kitten Nori, felt better than she had in weeks. At least until her brother Hawthorne found her. Chapter 2 Hawthorne was 16. He took care of most of the house stuff because their father, Dr. Horace, was too busy and important to be bothered with making dinner and braiding hair. And because their mother wasn't around. She had died a long time ago. Hawthorne liked sports and cooking and bossing people around. He also liked setting things on fire since he was a flare. A really good flare too. His powers never went wonky. Nori, Hawthorne cried now, staring at the beaver lodge. What are you doing? Beaver kit Nori tried to rub her face on Hawthorne's pant leg. I don't even know what you are right now, he went on, but you better change back and help me clean this up. Seriously, what have you done? It stinks in here. His voice made Beaver Kitten Nori tremble. Nori, change back now, Hawthorne yelled. Poof, he scared Nori into turning into her proper girl shape. Big hair, small body, brown skin, purple shirt. There was a bit of armchair fabric stuck in her teeth. Yuck, she spit it out. This was a disaster. The office and the bathroom were smelly messes. Father's favorite armchair looked like it had exploded. His antique desk tilted dangerously on three legs, and some of his precious books now resembled coleslaw. He was going to be really, really angry. Sorry, Nori whispered. Hawthorne looked mad and scared. Just help me clean, he told his sister. We don't have long. Together, they fixed up the damage as well as they could. They filled garbage bag after garbage bag, they wiped surface with spray cleaner. When the bathroom looked like a bathroom again, Hawthorne called a carpenter to repair the desk and armchair. He made Nori vacuum up the wood desk. He found the website for the cup and chaucer bookshop and ordered new copies of all the books Nori had ruined. While all this, when all this was done, Nori cleared her throat and asked, Hawthorne, are you still mad at me? He shook his head. You have to keep your human mind in control, Nori. That's all there is to it. I know. And when you turn into an animal, turn into a normal animal, he snapped. Stop mixing your parts up. You're getting really wonky and nobody likes it. I was practicing kitten like you told me to, Nori explained. And then the beaver part just happened and everything went upside down. That's what you were? A kitten beaver? Asked Hawthorne. Beaver kitten, actually, said Nori. She thought for a moment and grinned. A bitten. Whatever it was, it was gross, Hawthorne said. Nori's grin disappeared. Plus, you lost control like you always do, Hawthorne continued. We'll have to blame Dahlia's rabbits, I guess. Dahlia, the middle horse child, was 13. She was a fuzzy and had a lot of pets, including two bats, three toads, a ferret, a toucan, a pair of mice, and 12 rabbits. They weren't well behaved. The ferret pooped on the carpet, so did the toads, and the bats were always going into people's hair. It wasn't a stretch to blame Nori's mess on the rabbits. Still, Nori felt guilty. The rabbit shouldn't get in trouble for her mistake, neither should Dahlia. She twisted her hands. Shouldn't we tell father what really happened? No, said Hawthorne. We don't want him angry at you, not the day before the big test. Nori bowed her head. Maybe Hawthorne was right. Some lies are safer than the truth. Up until summer vacation, Nori had gone to ordinary school like everyone else her age. Nori's ordinary school was called Woodydale. It was kindergarten through fourth grade, just like all other ordinary schools. Nori had studied reading and writing, math and science, gym, art, and music. The one thing she hadn't studied was magic, since a person's powers didn't bubble up until around the time he or she turned 10. Once you were 10 and ready for fifth grade, you enrolled in a different school. You still had to read and do math and play basketball, but you also practiced magic. The kind of magic you practiced depended on your talent. Some kids were flares, they had fire talents like Hawthorne. Some were fuzzies, they had animal talents like Dahlia. Others were flickers or flyers or fluxers. Nori was a fluxer. 
although she wasn't a regular Fluxer. Her magic was unusually big. Unlike most Fluxers, she could turn into lots of animals. But Nori hid her magic from father because it always went wonky. For example, she'd be a perfectly nice skunk and suddenly swell up to the size of an elephant and then grow a trunk. Or she'd be a perfectly nice puppy and then grow squid legs. Nori knew that father would disapprove of a puppy with squid legs. He would disapprove a lot. Another problem was that girl Nori almost always lost control of her human self during her transformations and ended up making a huge mess. Skunkafant Nori had, been, uh, had become obsessed with finding peanuts and then stunk up the horse kitchen. They'd had to scrub everything with bleach and convince father that some real skunks had snuck through the kitchen window. Puppy Squid Nori had chewed all of Dahlia's shoes and then squirted Hawthorne with nasty squid ink. Hawthorne had claimed he'd been a victim of an exploding pen. Even Black Kitten had gone wrong four different ways. The scariest was when Nori had developed a touch of dragon and breathed fire on the sofa. Hawthorne had taken the blame for that one telling father he goofed up a flare seat warming project. Father had bought a new sofa and made Hawthorne pay for part of it, but Nori wondered if he'd really been fooled. Hawthorne got top marks in flare studies at Stage Academy. He never would have made a mistake like that. Father must have known that Nori's transformation power was out of control. He just didn't want to talk about it. He didn't talk about a lot of things. When father got home from Sage Academy that evening, Hawthorne told him about the damage. Immediately, father marched to his office to see it for himself. Hawthorne, Dahlia, and Nori followed. Dahlia, father said, frowning at the scratch marks on his desk. You have got to get those rabbits in line. Discipline is what they need. Discipline and a better lock on their pen. You'll take care of that, yes? Yes, father, Dahlia said. She glared at Nori. Father hesitated. Well, thank you, Hawthorne, for calling the carpenter and for ordering new copies of my books. Hawthorne nodded. Father glanced at Nori. For a second, she thought he was going to say something to her. Maybe he would ask her what really happened. Maybe he'd offer his help. Instead, he clenched and unclenched his fingers three times. The entire messed up office disappeared around them. Most flickers could make things invisible, but only extremely powerful flickers could make an entire room disappear while people were still standing in it. All the edges were neat and even too. The Horace family appeared to be hovering above the dining room. Go downstairs, children, father said. I'd prefer not to be disturbed for the rest of the evening. He himself disappeared and the conversation was over. Father left early for work the next morning. Nori ate breakfast with Dahlia Hawthorne and a few of Dahlia's rabbits. Do you want your egg hard or soft boiled? Hawthorne asked. He took a raw egg from the refrigerator. Soft, please, Nori answered. Hawthorne cooked the egg all, the way all flares did, heating it with his hands until it was perfectly done. Then he shot flames from his fingertips and toasted a piece of bread. As he served Nori her food, he said, eat up, you'll need your energy. Are you ready for the big test? Nori nodded, then she, took, then she shook her head. Then she nibbled at her toast. Just do what the teachers ask, Hawthorne advised. Not more, not less. Don't get weird. I know, said Nori. She tried to swallow, but the breadcrumbs stuck in her throat. They want you to be predictable. I know, and precise. Precise. I know. So get your details correct down to the whiskers. Okay. Keep control of the animal body. Okay. And braid your hair. Tight. Also, you can't wear those pants. Nori looked down at her clothes. But these are my lucky purple jeans. Hawthorne shook his head. Change into that dress with a nice collar. Nori stood up. Not now, after breakfast. Nori sat down and Hawthorne gave her more instructions. Dahlia joined in too. They talked at her while she tried to eat. They talked at her through the door while she changed her outfit. They talked at her all the way to Sage Academy, which was a 10 minute walk from their house. They led her through the school gates and paused. Hawthorne placed his hands on Nori's shoulders. Whatever happens, whatever you turn into, don't lick anything or eat anything, said Dahlia. Hawthorne hugged Nori. Just do your best. And pass the test, Dahlia added. Not that we're worried, they said together. Then they were gone. Hawthorne was expected at his summer job and Dahlia had an appointment with her math tutor. Nori was on her own. 
The building that held Sage Academy's Hall of Magic and Performance was tall and made of stone. Gargoyles looked down from the above. Inside, Nori found a line of kids standing with their parents. They were all there for the big test. Mothers smoothed their children's hair, fathers patted shoulders and buttoned cardigans. Nori's dress was itchy. In front of her was a light-skinned girl with a sharp, short haircut. Her features were small, her hands were small, and her feet were small. The only big thing about her were her glasses. They had black frames. Each lens was the size of a large cookie. The girl's dad spoke to her in a low voice. You can light matches, State Lacey. You know that. We know that. But let's go over the marshmallow. Golden brown in four seconds, light, slightly burnt is six. The girl, so the girl, Lacey, recited. Her lip trembled. If you undercook it, you won't get into Sage Academy, her dad warned. If you overcook it, that's even worse. Lacey nodded. Don't mess up, said the dad. Lacey's hands started to shake. Nori felt bad for her. She didn't think Lacey's dad was being particularly helpful. She tapped Lacey on the shoulder and smiled. This is scary, isn't it? My stomach's like one huge knot, Nori said. Lacey whipped around. Shh! Don't you realize people are concentrating? People are reviewing their magic techniques. Nori blushed. She chewed the inside of her cheeks and waited. The line moved forward. Now ten kids were in line ahead of her. Then eight, then five, then one. Lacey's name was called and a look of pure panic flashed across her face. Good luck, Nori said. Shh, Lacey said again. She smoothed out her expression, shrugged off a hug from her father, and marched into the Hall of Magic and Performance to take the big test. Silence. More silence. Then, from behind the Hall of Magic and Performance door, great racking sobs. Lacey burst out of the room, ran down the long hall, and pushed through the heavy doors of the building. Lacey? The girl's dad cried, dashing after his daughter. Lacey! Lacey's wail sounded ghostly. Nori shivered. It was her turn. To find out what happens during Nori's magic test, check out Upside Down Magic. Thanks for joining us today. Hopefully I'll see y'all next time. Goodbye.